plus power whenever you want it. This is the Maserati MC20. Maserati's first crack at a proper supercar in some 50 years, and boy, what a job. Now you may have noticed this isn't the standard MC20 coupe, this is the MC20 Cello. Cello, of course, in Italian means sky. This is a beautiful folding hardtop cabriolet. So yes, this really is Maserati's first authentic, real ground up design supercar, 50 years, which is quite crazy when you think about it. Now, of course, Maserati hasn't been dormant for those years. We had the wonderful MC12 homologation special back in the early 2000s. That, of course, was a platform share with the almighty Ferrari Enzo. This, though, the MC20 is bespoke. It's completely new from the ground up. And this cello specifically has its own brand new carbon tub, which was developed purely for this drop top version and also for the EV, which will be coming along later. Yes, there will be an electric MC20 in time. What a thing that will be. But right now we're in the MC20 cello, so let's talk about it. 621 horsepower and 538 pound feet of torque from this beautiful, sonorous, in house developed, engineered, and built Maserati twin turbocharged V6. This engine really is an absolute cracker. Very surprising. The performance is magical. This car really does personify the mid-engine supercar feel. It's spectacularly well-balanced, excellently poised in the corners, wonderful under acceleration. The brakes are excellent. Listen to that. And can we talk about the spec for a moment? This color is out of this world pretty. It's the kind of thing that if someone said to me, yep, the MC20 cello that you're gonna get, it's gonna be baby blue, but it's gonna be metallic baby blue, I'd have said, what on earth? And this cello weighs in at 3,920 pounds. Or of course, the vast majority of that comes from the folding roof mechanism. Beautiful. Beautiful to drive, it's beautiful to look at. Maserati have done a stunning job with this thing. <laughs> I love that the paddle shifts are fixed and they're big and they're wide and they're carbon fiber, of course. Great to look at, great to operate. The steering wheel is actually the best steering wheel here. That's important, actually. Too many of these steering wheels now have got too much crap going on. Of course, this does have buttons, things, dials, and I think the launch button's there, the start stop button's there, but. It's well thought out. It's carbon fiber and Alcantara, which I like. There's room here at three and nine, not only for your hands and your thumbs to rest, but your palms as well. A few of the cars, yeah, they do a lot of it, but then they sort of forget that if you're gonna make a track car, the steering wheel needs to work on a track. I cannot tell you the amount of cruise controls I've started to activate with the inside of my palms while I've been mid-corner this week. That's annoying. Luckily, thankfully, the MC20 does a wonderful job. Aerodynamics are another very interesting thing with this car. Maserati challenged themselves to give this car as much downforce as possible without having to resort to huge, great big wings, gurney flaps and monstrous aero, which would detract from this car's rather beautiful, crisp lines. And they did that. They used ground effect and a lot of underbody aerodynamics in order to achieve what is a miraculous amount of downforce. 
I really mean it. I've been pushing this car, trying to find the limit in the corners, and it just grips and pulls. It's so good. It's really good. Love the sound. The gearbox is beautiful. I've got it in sport mode at the moment. The reason for that, in Corsa mode, with the traction control set to full off, this car's a little bit tail happy. And I've been told that that isn't happening today. So we're in sport mode where everything firms up just a touch. You still get just a little bit of aid, which I think is advisable. Beautiful turn in. The steering is lovely. It's, it's, it's nicely light. But as we know, it's so hard when you get in a car that, where the steering is too light and this is just perfectly balanced. You get a great amount of feedback. The car goes where you point it. That is the crucial thing. Wherever you point this car is where it goes. Limit you so much. If you try and downshift and you're right on the rev limit, it will drop down and take you there. Torque, brilliant as well. Plentiful and it comes on in a really nice gradual way. It doesn't feel laggy, but it also doesn't run out of puff. Look at this, 6,000 RPM, 7,000 RPM, 78 and shift. It's just pulling all the way. Love it. Whoa, that turn in. It's brutal. It's elemental. Oh yes, oh yes. But this car represents something of a line in the sand the Maserati, right? It shows that they can be successful on their own. They can make cars which compete with the very best Italian, English and German supercars. I'd argue it's one of the prettiest cars on sale. I'd say it's probably one of the most approachable whilst also being one of the best handling also. Sort of don't want to stop driving it. It's really good. $261,200 is what this car costs. Of course, that's a, a lot of money. Come on, look, this car does a bit of everything, right? It's a perfect Grand Tourer. It's a monstrous sports car, supercar. Looks great, feels special, really good, really, really good. 